All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. We've got about 30 minutes of cool people from around the world staying cozy at home and showing off the electronics and crafting and 3D printing and sewing and soldering that they're working on. Yeah. So it's our time um, to see what people are doing. One programming note. Yes. So lots of folks are at home. We're at the Adafruit office. No one is here now. So in New York City, we're doing mass indoors again. Uh, but no one's here except for Lady and I, and we live together. So after everyone left, um, we took our masks off, and that's why you're not seeing us with the mask on yes. right now. But I would, uh, wanted to say we always do the right thing to keep everyone safe, but that's the only reason you're not yes. seeing us with masks right now. So without further ado, uh, this week, it. Jay is coming by for DigiKey. Hey, Jay, Jay. What, what you got going on? Hey, I have my Finnish little robot steampunk owl this time compared to Ooh. the last time, which was like half naked. I finally finished the design. I'm going to turn it on really quickly. Um, added little details to like the head. Music so it like looks around and the gears move. And if I okay. press button A, the wings move a bit. Oh. Kind of there, there was an electronic or a, a robotic owl from some thing that I forgot its name. Uh, Clash of the Titans, I believe it was. Yeah, I forgot the name of it though. But someone will know in the chat. Yeah, robotic yeah. Robot so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I just released the video today, um, so you can check it out on digikey.com, and that way you can see how I designed this and I built this. I have the write-up, all the STL files, so if other people wish to give it a shot, they can. Oh, I love it. I love the, uh, the eyes, the gear mesh thing is so, so cool. Oh, so yeah. Minerva has been in a couple of puppet videos, so this is, I feel like this is like meat puppet, and yours is robot puppet, so this is Minerva, right. and soft, uh, soft puppet. Minerva's soft been puppet. in a couple of things. So, Fun thing, I, I'm working on that now. I have to learn how to sew. I've never used a sewing machine before, so this is a new thing for me. Different engineering. I feel like your robot is what Minerva looks like underneath. Probably, yeah. yeah. I know, no, not skeleton owl. All right. All right, cool. Keep coming about the robots. I love these little yeah. companion bots that you make. Oh, yeah, I have a lot more coming down the pipeline. So All cool. right, thanks All so right. much, Jay. And this is, uh, I, you know, I always, I, I probably don't need to do disclaimers, but I'm going to do it anyways. This is not a paper motion, but uh, Jay has one of Adam Savage's like shop uh, aprons, and I really That's like these. Good. So we're gonna contact Adam and see if we can stock these in the Adafruit store. You didn't talk. You didn't tell me about this. You, there's no affiliate thing. There's no nothing like there, you crazy people out there. But um, how is it working out for you? Really good. It's super good material, and I love just having like these pockets up here for things. And I have like pockets all over like the bottom portions too. Yeah. Like, these, like I have my hammer on my belt now, which is actually really useful. I feel and, like that was made for you. I mean, I don't know if he. Honestly, I love it because one thing that helps me get into like the mindset of working on stuff every day is dressing up a bit. You know, like putting on oh, yeah, like your... even, or even like my glasses with the monocle. Just mm -hmm. putting those on kind of put me in that mindset of like, all right, here, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Because yeah. if not, my brain goes everywhere, and I'm just like, I want to do this. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. What's on the internet right now? Uh, also, uh... I think it stops you probably from like looking at your phone. <laughs> Oh no! I have a whole like setup here for my phone. So. Oh, you got your, oh. They still you still on that? Stream and stuff. And take photos. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much, Jay, right, and uh, thanks again for sharing and showing all your work every week. No problem. Guess right, good day. Day. Next Bye. up, JP. I have to put my owl away, JP. Bye. All right. Yeah. You know, I think that actually uh, Minerva is what Lars thinks Lars looks like <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> yeah. but it, I don't. I, there's gonna be right. some random people tuning in. They're gonna be like, "What is this What's show with the again? puppets?" Like, what is this? <laughs> Everyone Why are they a doing this? Familiar. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you tell us what you're up to? Uh, so trip. what I'm up to? Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm up to. I got these delightful Neo sliders, which are pretty brand spanking new. I think they're our first Stemma QT device that uses the AT Tiny uh, 8x7. Uh, as its little chip. And so that means these are uh, Stemma QT. I can run them over I squared C using these lovely little Stemma QT quick style cables. And I can chain them as long as I give them different addresses uh, for that for the bus by cutting some jumpers on the back. And I have them running right now into a feather. Uh, and they will, one thing about them is you'll see that they've got four NeoPixels under there for some underlighting effects, which is really stylish. I have them all doing this kind of amber thing, uh, a darker or brighter amber. And whoa, what you'll hear with that one is, let me show you what I'm controlling. I have it set up as a MIDI uh, CC controller for this uh, software synthesizer. So you'll even mm -hmm. see as I make it louder, those little meters are going up and then I can start changing some parameters of how the sound works. Cute. 
and it's a uh, a lot of fun to be able to control software synth stuff with real physical controls because there's no beating. I mean, just finding your mouse and clicking on a thing, zero satisfaction level. This mm-hmm. high satisfaction level. Yes. That's awesome. And, All right. So I love that's all Python code. It's pretty simple. Uh, and uh, what's that? Oh, I just, I, I love the plug and plays. It's something Scott wanted. And so uh, hopefully Scott's happy too. Um, I know. You know what? These p- slide pots are always one of the more annoying things to deal with because of they've got this weird uh, footprint. And so they don't fit onto like a breadboard or a perma proto usually. And uh, then mounting them to something and finding a way to connect them. It's all a whole big rigmarole. So what I'm hoping is to to create a nice little uh, template for a case that you can make or a, even a, a board to just screw it into using nylon uh uh, fasteners that we sell 2.5 or, or maybe M3 uh, to, to just connect those up and, and make a little board of them however many you want. All right. And what are you showing uh, this week on GP's workshop? Is it this? Uh, yeah, I've got two things. I'm, I'm still continuing with my Pip-Boy project, little wrist-mounted Pip-Boy mini. And so I'll be showing some stuff with that. And I'll be uh, showing this, including some of the uh, the hardware design stuff and how to how to make it work. So Okay. and the code behind it so cool tune and in and we'll play around with this stuff that's thursday and uh one of the things that jp and i were talking about is we might try to do some type of holiday event where we're doing a tuesday um product pick with uh, lady ada and jp and myself and uh we just go full-on qvc style and qvc like, style an yeah. hour of just drinking our cappuccinos and <laughs> chatting about what's on our My minds favorite our on a couch yeah this ninja is blenders so and yeah. This year, oh, no, this so, get the gift that keeps on this giving. This is the best gift. Christ- I give this to all of my nieces and nephews every year. And I'll tell you why I love these so much. They're yeah. perfect for anyone yeah. in your family. I know, like, and it's like some like weird ass thing. You're like, what is this? Like, like it's always like a pajama set. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Highly elaborate. Uh, don't you, don't ask why to, I know so much. Yeah. If you need to stab <laughs> sting, this is the knife for you. Um. Anywho, uh, we'll show that on the uh, show later. That is a do. No- yeah. Uh, okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Next up, Scott, what you got going on? Uh, Come back to me. It's not working. (laughs) Cool. I can tell. So that Uh, was was the (laughs) beginning of, I believe, uh, Queen song. Yeah. Um, Okay. So let's uh, go to Paint Your Dragon. Phil B, what you got going on this week? Howdy. uh, Interactive show and tell. Do you want a dragon or tape? Dragon or tape? Oh, tape. Tape, tape, tape. Tape. Okay, good. Good. Skip that one la- last week. Yeah. Um, some retro tech I just wanted to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. Like someone on Twitter had these like VHS cassette box themed sneakers and he was in yeah, an airport cool. and like somebody started like like um, gatekeeping like, yeah, but do you know about beta? <laughs> <laughs> can't, we just, <laughs> can't we just enjoy old stuff and not like gatekeep? Um Yes, the block button works. It's too it's too <laughs> old to gatekeep. I mean, who like it's it's gone. <laughs> right? Yeah. So anyway, um yeah, like like a lot of folks, you know, even people who who came after cassettes were even a thing, you've probably heard of like the VHS versus beta wars and that sort of thing. You know, it's just it's just one of those things in business, but even before those there were other formats um like um Umatic and uh, cart revision was a weird one, and I have I have one here. Um, this was called um, EIAJ One, which was um, tape format. It w- this is the first tape format that was interchangeable from different companies' equipment. Before that, if you bought one company's video equipment, the tape only worked with their their machine. Mm, yeah. Um, and so this was in uh, 1969, I believe, and it was a black and white only format, half inch tape, and it's on a reel. It's yeah, not in well. a, it's not in a, a, you know, a cassette like uh, the later formats. And so if you had this, you had to, you know, wind it through the machine and um, watch it that way. You could only, only watch it once, but it was very enjoyable for that one time. Did, 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 it, did it say be kind and rewind at the end or? Who knows? I don't know. But it's one of those things that like I'd heard of, but had never. And these aren't rare or anything. This, these are garbage. You know, there, there's yeah. a lot of them. But I just somehow had never encountered one in person until yeah. I found one at the thrift store for a buck. And it's like, I'm well, sure they're like, what is this? And I, they're like, what? I think oh. it's <laughs> need to collect all the different forms of, of uh, media 
um, and then show them all together like, oh, this is a floppy. This is a CF card. This is one weirdo tape thing. And then like all these attempts to make a proprietary thing. And like, it's a Galapagos Island of, of things. It's like, oh, like I am, <laughs> I am the tape that won't, you know, play in the other thing. And it's just, it doesn't get too I much farther than that. I case for it too. Yeah. I mean, that's, Yo, so that's cool. well, that's what caught my eye is it just came in this beautiful snap case. And it's like, I don't even, I, I like this can more you than hold the, the case. So you yeah. can see it. You could take, yes. uh, you can make pancakes and that could be your pancake lunch box. It is really Ooh, nice. Pancake transporter. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, anyway, it's just one of those weird bits of, of, um, you know, analog uh, video history that, uh, yeah. that I'd show. All okay. right. Well, thank you so much, Phil B. And, uh, for those who don't know, Phil B always inspires me to, uh, share some retro tech. And, uh, because I've gotten a little tiny bit more time, I hope to be taking some photos of some old things and putting them up online and more. So thank you, Phil B, for making me uh, want to show you cool stuff too. Okay, cool. Be cool, respool. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't download a a, a car, would you? you know, it's, it's like one of those. You wouldn't. Too. You wouldn't like copy over a single you, spool analog black you, and white you tape, would you? You? Wouldn't, you wouldn't spool someone, would you? Okay. All right. Thanks, Phil B. Okay. All right, we're going to go back to Scott. Keeping it weird. See Scott, how you doing? Scott? Uh, I think it's working. Okay. Dark Scott. Yeah, I'm in the dark because I'm sitting dark, in front dark, of, dark. of the NeoPixels. So we've got NeoPixel strips on the lights here. And I wanted to show off that I've got uh, editing the code running over blue Bluetooth, over BLE. So I'm sitting in a chair. I am not connected to it. I did have to fix it earlier. <laughs> Um, but what I can do here is if I go into the editor and I want to make it right now, they're white. If I want to make them Christmas themed, I can edit it red, here. Red, blue, okay, green, red and green. Hopefully. Okay, zero, zero. Okay, do it. And then hit save and run. And it flips me there. Wow. You can see the serial output, but then the lights are red and green now. Wow. Mm. And somehow setting the delay to zero causes everything to stop working. <laughs> so that looks great. This is right. a, this is and, in life person testing. And, and folks can go to code.circuitpython.org and play around and do stuff like this themselves. Yeah, totally. Uh, it only works in Chrome on certain devices, but uh, we're obviously early days and still trying to fix uh, issues if you have them. But um, yeah. it's pretty magical when it does work, and people should try it. Uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, this is a little glimpse of the future. Um, I think for how a lot of folks will be sending data to devices. Um, and then are you going to be doing a deep dive this week, Scott? Yeah, I, I should say for Android people, this is uh, this works on Android phones usually. Um, and that's our intent. So if you're on Android, this is what we're hoping will work for you. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, for a deep dive, we were just talking. And I think what I'm going to do is work on the learn guide for the Raspberry Pi circuit Python. Cool. And what board were you using? Someone wanted to know for this project. Uh, this is a Feather NRF 52840. Cool. Hi, right, great. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you. All right. And we're going to wrap up with Liz and Cats. Liz, how's it going? Liz and Cats. Okay, Cats and Liz. Good. Winnie is, uh, you know, having a fun, fun time. Yay. Um get the uh, fuzz pedal working. Um, I didn't actually have any issues with PCB. I just had the wrong value um, pot. Um, so just to quickly show. So it's nice and fuzzy. Um, but the other thing I started working on is this little cap touch um, MIDI uh, controller with a circuit playground. So I've got it hooked up via Raspberry Pi to the robot xylophone. Um, and oh, sometimes it needs to be reset. There we go. Uh, so got some cap touch just. That's nice. So yeah, just quick little Neat. prototype I put together tonight. So yeah. It's a wonderland over at, it's just a cool corner. You should totally stream from that corner because yeah. it looks like super fun. Yeah. I love that the cat has a little shelf behind you to come in and like. Yeah, she was getting well, upset that I was walking her way up. So I think it's more like Liz has a little shelf and the cat runs. Sorry. That place. That's, that's what right. it seems like. That's and don't forget, you also uh, we have a new project from you and uh, Nelly Pedro is cool, Menorah. 
Yes. Video yeah. yeah. Well, but other people do. You know, we'll be, other people. We'll be know. showing that tonight on Ask an Engineer. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Liz. Well, so good to see you. Can't wait to see you in uh, just a few weeks. Uh, yeah. In, in Meet Space, as they say. Um, yeah. And uh, thank you again. This, you know, it's holiday season. It's thankful season. We're so grateful that you uh, show and show your stuff here on Show and Tell and and more. So thank you. Well, I'm thankful for working with you folks and making it uh, possible to have fun with all this stuff. <laughs> it's all it's it's all fun. Okay. All hey, right. Thanks, well, everybody. that's uh, our show and tell tonight, everybody. Thanks for coming by and making this the best, you know, 20, 30 minutes of our week every single week. Um, we'll be here uh, next week, maybe. Uh, we'll see who's doing the show and tell, but there'll be a show and tell no matter what next week. And ask an engineer and all the other things that you can expect. Don't forget, Thursday is... JP's workshop Friday deep dive with Scott and then next week this lady, lady it is probably gonna be on Saturday night and then um, we have JP's product pick of the week on Tuesdays and 3d hangouts on Wednesdays so thank you so much everybody and once again um, whatever you celebrate and whatever you're doing um, we just wanted to say thank you for being part of this adventure with the Adafruit folks see you all in about 10 minutes go get some hot chocolate <laughs>